Welcome back to Singapore, friends. Born of independence in 1965, this tiny island city-state is one of my favorite places on Earth. And apparently, I'm not the only one. 19 million people from around the world visited Singapore last year. So in this episode, we're going to explore my highly recommended places to consider staying on your visit. There is something for everyone's price point. However, I believe that location is just as important as price when you're deciding where to stay. So we'll approach this based on location, point out pricing considerations, and drop a few pro tips you should know before you book your trip. Let's do this. Just because you can drive a car across the entire country in about an hour doesn't mean any old Hilton is going to cut it. Let's start our journey near the downtown core at Marina Bay. The most iconic and recognizable hotel in Singapore, the Marina Bay Sands. Literally the Las Vegas resort vibe right here in Southeast Asia with rooms starting at about $400 a night. The extraordinary three towers encompass 2,500 rooms and suites and on top, a three acre sky park with gardens, jogging paths, and the world's largest rooftop infinity pool. Now you must be a hotel guest to access the pool, but the fact that it's sitting on top of a shopping mall, casino, and features the gardens by the bay, staying here or not, you gotta check this place out. A trip to the top observation deck will cost about $20 per person, which can be redeemed for a drink at the rooftop bar. Next up, just a quick walk across the bay to the central business district. Nearly everything you'll want to check off your must-see list is easily accessible by public transportation from the central business district which, to be completely transparent, is why I almost exclusively stay here at the JW Marriott South Beach. Moderately priced for Singapore, averaging $250 per night, its amenities and location cannot be beat as far as I'm concerned. There are two swimming pools available, but you'll likely be spending your time on the 18th floor infinity pool overlooking downtown. And another pro tip, alcohol in Singapore is taxed heavily, so even two drinks can be extremely expensive, especially at any hotel. Be sure to purchase the executive lounge access at check-in where free breakfast and dinner are served daily and most importantly, drinks are free until 9 p.m. each night. Also in the central business district, Claiming some of the most dramatic views of the city and Marina Bay, another expensive luxury entry is the Fullerton Hotel. Built in 1928, this official national monument is located just behind the Merline statue and will run about 350 bucks a night. Now, as I mentioned earlier, location is everything, and Merlion Park is one of the most visited attractions in town. With the head of a lion and the body of a fish, this mythical creature is the official mascot of Singapore. So you have to visit. Now let's take a quick jump over to Chinatown. There are plenty of super inexpensive options here, hostels and boutique hotels. So if that's your jam, I highly recommend Chinatown although Little India has some great options as well. But one of the most unique experiences can be had here at the Park Royal on Pickering. Say that three times fast. This is one of the greenest hotels on the planet. Modern and eco-friendly, it includes multiple tropical gardens and skywalks built into the building architecture. In fact, if you were a fan of the HBO series Westworld, you may recognize this location. A room here can be secured at certain times of the year for about $140 a night, which is a bargain in Singapore. And the proximity to Chinatown is perfect, a location I cover in detail in another video, so be sure to check that out after this one. Now, this would not be a places to stay in Singapore video if I didn't mention the legendary Raffles Hotel. It's located back in the central business district, just behind the J-Dub. 
freshly remodeled and famously featured in the movie Crazy Rich Asians, no stay in Singapore would be complete without a visit to this iconic hotel. And I did say visit. Nightly rates here begin at $1,000 a night, so you truly need to be crazy rich to stay here. But who am I to judge? You do you. Of course, the long bar at Raffles is known as the origin spot of the world famous Singapore Sling. You're going to be tempted to have one of these drinks just to check it off your list. You're in Singapore, you must, right? Wrong. Here's your next pro tip. It's a $32 cocktail and tastes straight up like Diet Kool-Aid. A much better use of your money is a Marina Bay bum boat tour, also covered in another video. But like I said before, hey, you do you. Also, be sure to follow me on Instagram to see more photos from this trip. Next up, Sentosa Island. This is where the locals vacation. I would definitely consider staying here on my next extended visit. And if this is your first trip to Southeast Asia, this is likely a good starter location. Major all-inclusive resorts, beach clubs, and home to Singapore's Universal Studios, Sentosa Island feels like an entirely different place and just 20 minutes from downtown. Most resorts here will run you around $250 to $300 a night and are centered around Resort World Sentosa, where there is free transportation via the island monorail system and most of the resorts connect to this central hub. It's slammed full of great food and all the touristy goodness you can handle. And did I mention beach clubs? Some of you may want to lather up in sunscreen and enjoy a relaxing day of ear-thumping dubstep while sipping that $25 cocktail by the pool. Uh, yeah, not my thing. For me, I think a pit stop at Din Tai Fung back at Resorts World is a better option. And trust me, friends, it's some of the best dim sum on the planet. My name is Mike Johnston, and this has been another entry in my Singapore travel diary. If you've enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, and even share this video with your friends. It helps me, and I really appreciate it. Also, this video is just one entry from season two of my online travel diary series. So be sure to watch my other videos from Singapore, linked here, as well as take a look at season one, which includes destinations in Europe and the US. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week with an all new diary entry.